What is up everybody, it is Mr. Dams here and welcome to this tutorial of how to set up your very own Nitrado Arc Survival Ascended server. So if we go to the Nitrado website, we can see that Arc Survival Ascended is actually the very first game that pops up. And before we get our server and set it up, we will need to create an account. So you need to go to the top right here, log in, and then register, follow the steps there. And then once you are done, we can navigate back to the main page here and we can click rent your game server now, which will give us a whole host of options for servers. The standard is the 20 slot server for 30 days rolling subscription at 17 pounds and seven pence. But you can have a few other options if you wish. You can even go as low as three days. Perhaps you just want to try out ARC for the first time, or maybe you're holding a weekend only event. So a three day subscription for as little as £4.24 there. You can even customize your own server if you want. You can change the amount of player slots by dragging the slider along. You can see the price of the server changing on the right hand side there. And you can even change the amount of time you want to purchase your server for. If you do choose a longer run time, at 90 days, you will get 9% discount. And at a whole year, you will get 18% discount. Let's just assume for today's purposes, we're going to go for the standard 30 days and 20 slots. We can also see on the right hand side here that London is where my closest server is as somebody living in the UK. I will get 9ms ping for ASA. But if I want to choose the location of my server, perhaps I'm playing with people who are in America, for example, I can scroll down and I can choose a different location for a server, any on these lists, and they all have a traffic light system as to how good that ping is. But if you can, I would always try to get your server as close as to you with as small a number ping as possible for the best possible connection. So when we're ready to go, we can choose this configuration here and we can pay by a number of methods, PayPal, Visa, MasterCard, etc. And most importantly, on the right hand side here, if you type in Miss V5, that will get you a cheeky 5% discount, which will be valid for the first 100 people that use it. Once we're done, select the payment method. We're going to hit order. And once that is done, we are ready to start setting our server up. And to do that, we're going to go to the top right hand side to where your account name is and go to my services. And then this is a list of all the servers I am currently running. I'm going to scroll down to this one here. The one I chose actually has 20 player slots. It is currently turned off as we can see. And if we want to change the settings, we will need to click the web interface button. So this is the server dashboard. We've got a bunch of statistical information about the server here. Everything is saying zero. That's because our server is currently turned off. You scroll down, you've got Archon information and FTP information here. You don't need to worry too much about those things if you are just starting out with setting up your server. But something I would definitely do here on the left is get yourself into general settings and change a few things before you get started. First of which being your server name, because you're going to want something that is easily searchable once you get into the game. Do set a server password and an admin password as well. Have a look at your map name, because at the moment, as of the time that this video was created, we've only got the island and scorched earth, which are the official ASA maps. So you're going to make, want to make sure that you select the right one for your server. We've also got custom, which applies to any modded maps that you wish to play on. So you would need to select custom there and then type the name of the map mod in there. I would say the next thing to maybe look at before starting your server is the PVE and PVP settings. Because if you scroll all the way down here to PVE, we'll see that I have ticked PVE, which simply means player versus environment if you're completely new to the game. By default, this is actually turned off, which means it's going to be player versus player, which means you can damage other players, their dinosaurs and their structures and vice versa. So depending on what playstyle you want, you're going to want to make sure you tick the correct button here. Now, besides these things, there are so many different configurable options and settings for Arc. And those are the very basic ones to get yourself going. So if you're ready to go, simply hit save changes. That's going to save all your changes. Do make sure that your server is turned off if you are making changes to any of your settings. Otherwise, you might have some problems with them saving and the server starting back up. However, there are a few settings that you might want to consider changing in order to optimize your gameplay experience for how you like to play the game. And some of the most common server settings I get asked about for what I use on my personal servers include the amount of XP that my character gains through doing various actions in the game. I actually have this set to the default of one. But if you scroll down to here, this is how you can change it. You can increase the amount of XP through doing various things in the game, depending on how you like to play. I would say secondary to this is probably the amount of items that I harvest, the harvest rate, which I actually have set to two 
the default is one. So that means every time I hit an item to harvest it in game, I'm going to get double the amount of resources that I would have done otherwise. I would say the next thing to probably take a look at is the taming rate. So I have mine set, you can see here, to three from the default of one. So that means dinosaurs will tame out at three times the rate that they would do on official servers. And then the most commonly asked about group of settings that I get are the baby settings. If I scroll back up to here, by default, the disable imprint dino buff is actually turned off. And I think we want this on. It means when you imprint on a dino, a baby dino, as you are raising it, that the player who imprints on the dino actually gets a buff to damage and resistance. So I definitely think we would like that turned on. So I've actually ticked it off there. And then here are my main breeding settings. I'll talk to you very quickly about these 20 times 20 breeding, which essentially means dinosaurs will mature 20 times the speed of official. For context, a Rex would take nine hours to raise, a Giga would take 18 hours to raise with my settings. And to match that, I have the baby amount uh, multiplier, the imprint multiplier there are set to 1.25 and the cuddle interval multiplier set to 0.05. These might seem like very specific numbers, but I've curated it so that we can get 100% imprint on all of our dinos as long as you are there pretty much within five minutes to imprint on your dinos. So those are like the most important settings, I think, to get yourself going. But there are so many different settings to choose from and Nitrodo are adding more and more to general settings all of the time. But if you do have any questions about a specific setting, feel free to ask in the comment of this YouTube video or alternatively, you can join my Discord and ask there, the link for which is in the description of the video. But essentially, these are the most important ones. Again, save changes and a few other things we probably want to look at. If we go to the left hand side here, you will see Curse Forge mods. And it is through this tab that you can add any mods that you might like to play with. If we look down here, here are some of the most popular mods. All we need to do is simply click on it to add it. You can see it has installed the mod via the mod code there. If we wish to remove it, we can click on the mod here and it removes it. As simple as that. There are so many different mods to choose from. There's a little search box here. We've also got all of our official ASA mods, including the Dear Jane mod and any events that are running as well. As you can see, Love Ascended is featured here. So definitely have a look through these if you like to play modded and give them an experiment. Also important on the left here are the config files. This includes the game.ini file and also the game user settings.ini. And here you'll find all of the settings written out that you have chosen in your general settings. However, there might be a very particular setting that you wish to add that isn't in the general settings. And essentially these files are where you are gonna add those. If you were just starting out, I wouldn't worry about this too much, but it is an option for you if you wish to get more complex with your server settings. If we also look on the left here across Arc, this is a new feature now that is active, whereby if you wish to have several servers running at the same time with different maps, for example, you can set a cluster ID, there we go. And we can copy that into any of our other servers cluster ID box. And what that will mean is that when we're in game, we can transfer our character, our belongings, our dinos in between servers. You will want to make sure that cross arc is ticked and you've also got all these personalization settings. You might just want to enable survivor only downloads. You might not want people to take dinosaurs and belongings back and forth, but of course you can change those as you please just here. Make sure to always save those settings when you are done. Other important things that have now been added to the Nitrodo dashboard, player control. This is an interesting one. If you don't want to have a password, but you only want to allow vetted people onto your server, then you can add them into a whitelist via their ASA ID. So it's all done slightly differently now because we do have cross play as an option. So all you would need to do is add a player by their ASA ID. If anybody needs to know how to find this information, just ask and I'll be happy to be able to provide it for you. And you can add them in here. In terms of whitelisting, I'm not, I'm not quite sure why it works this way, but you need to go back to your general settings as well and scroll down to the box, which says, here we go, exclusive join. So if you're doing a whitelist, click exclusive join and also add your player's ASA ID in this exclusive join box. For server health, it's really important to have a server restart that happens every day. And this is exactly where you can set it. The way it works is you want to set it not every hour that would be an absolute nightmare for some reason it doesn't allow you to sit at an exact time it's going to happen between a five minute interval so i tend to go 
for as close to the hour as possible. I tend to do eight in the morning because where I am, that's when hardly any players are on. So to get to as close to eight in the morning, I have to select hour seven, 55 to 59 minutes. It's going to happen every day, every month, every year. And uh, yeah, I just add it in and that happens automatically. Uh, another common thing to do for server health is to wipe all wild dinosaurs. And unfortunately, the ability to do that in your general settings isn't working at the moment. So if you do want to destroy wild dinos, you will need to type this command into your game console. Once you are in game, you would need to hit the tilde button on the keyboard enter your admin password, and then type in this command. Doing these two things, having your daily restart, having your uh, daily dino wipe will ensure for a healthy and optimal running server. Once all this is done, we are pretty much ready to start up our server. So we can go to the top right, hit start server and go. Now it's gonna take a little bit of time to, to start up. Once this little Pac-Man has finished doing its thing, there we go, look, a new update is installing as well. We will be able to search for our server in the Arc server list and join. When you get in game, you can hit the start button, join game, and then make sure that you've got unofficial underlined there and that you've got show password protected servers ticked here. Once you've done that, you can search for your server name in here. So mine is Miss Vadam's test. I hit enter and lo and behold, the server appears. I can click it join enter password and we are ready to go and start playing the game guys thank you so much for watching this nitrado tutorial if you did like the content you found it useful do consider dropping a like and subscribing it does really help me out if you have any questions about any of the settings that i personally use or anything you've seen in the video please feel free to ask in the youtube comments or alternatively you can join my discord link in the description as well a final shout out to nitrado thank you very much for sponsoring this video guys i'll catch you soon over and out see you later